Welcome back to New York City, everybody. I'm Coach Todd. I look skinnier in person. That's Coach Cole. Uh, and you're back for boot camp workout number 11. Since we are, this is going by fast, isn't it? Like a speeding bullet train. <laughs> it's actually taken us like four months yeah, to get this far. So we're almost there though. Hopefully you haven't been doing four months to get through the past 10 workouts. Uh, as a reminder, we're gonna have two parts to this workout. We're gonna have a strength portion and a conditioning portion. Strength portion, you're going to um, be using, actually both of them, you'll be using either one dumbbell or one kettlebell. Coach Cole's gonna be using that dumbbell. I'm gonna be using that kettlebell. Um, we are going to be hopping in in just a couple minutes here, uh, actually like 20 seconds here. But before we do, before we get going and you get sweaty, if you can do a favor, like the video, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, it really helps us run our growth to the thousand here. Uh, with that being said, Coach Cole, let's do it. We're gonna warm up today. We're gonna start some happy baby squats. So, we can come down all the way to the bottom of our squat position. You guys can be nice and relaxed here. You can let the background. I would like you to grab your toes with your hand. Cool. And then you're going to take your foot, press it up to the sky, and then we're going to relax all the way to that top. We're going to do 10 happy babies. I feel like. <clears throat> yes. Uh, I feel like these are called something else, too. Uh, uh, these are, I call them happy baby squats. Real happy babies are on the floor. They're a yoga thing. It's just a very similar pose, but we happen to be standing up. You know what they're called? I'm trying to remember though. Well, then they're called happy baby squats for the next five seconds. <laughs> Doing a whole ten. I have two more, I think. We are filming in uh, New York City. We're in Brooklyn today. We've been moving to Brooklyn for the past few videos. Been a heat wave for a couple of them. So much better. Today is great though. We're gonna get some arm circles going, both arms at a time. Let's go 10 forward. I know I'm ready to hit my knuckle on something. We'll switch directions, go 10 backwards. And pat yourself on the back 10 times. Is that good news and bad news? Uh, it's the same thing. We're gonna do five inch burps as I'm getting some news here. Apparently, I'm gonna go hands on the floor, walk it on out for a push up from your feet or your knees, whichever works best. Walk it back in and come up with your news. Um, I am almost at a point where my medium shirts aren't fitting anymore. Oh, boo hoo. You say that, but one, it really affects your wardrobe. No, I, that's that's valid because I had to throw away like every pair of pants I've ever owned like a year ago. So. So there's affecting your wardrobe, and there's two. This is gonna sound super shallow, but I don't care. <laughs> I like to be very shallow here. When it fits the shoulders, and it's a large, and it's baggy in the middle. If it's a medium, it's fitted in the middle. And I hate wearing shirts with that, like it's all loose and flowy in the middle, which is what's gonna happen when I go to the large. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yes. Um, Brian, Coach Brian. <laughs> so you're doing some side bends and some other things. We have like picking up the core, but still. I mean, you could just, yeah. We're gonna get 30 jumping First jumps. First world problem. And then we'll talk. <laughs> 30? 30. I figure if you get to talk about your legs all the time. Uh, <laughs> Boston, you're cold. You got any? Hey, Lula, man. Damn. That's such a weird body. I have my pant and short size is usually a large. Sometimes I get her a medium zip and I just brush My shirt size is small. So, more large? Hard. Yeah. The waist? The running the shorts, uh, the one with the like built in compression linings oh. have to be a large. Yeah. Because they're just not built for like anybody with thighs apparently. Not like those. Um, <laughs> clearly, my upper body's not there. Are we still warming up? No, we're good. That was our last 30. All right. So, if you've been doing this workout series with us, <clears throat> uh, one of the formats that we do is this uh, when this format where we do an unbroken round of movements. We started with eight minutes, we went to nine minutes, last time we did was 10 minutes, this is the last time we're gonna be using that format, so it's 11 minute air wrap. So once we pick up that kettlebell, your first goal is to try to not put it down the entire time for 11 minutes. We switch it from side to side if we're not. So let's actually take a look at the moves that we're gonna be doing. Uh, coach, Cole's gonna demonstrate for me. So first one we're gonna be doing is just some single arm swings where we're alternating our hands every swing. So with the thumbbell or the kettlebell, just taking it up to eye level, 
we're going to be doing 10 per side, 20 total. Once he gets done with that 20th one, front rack position, push press, dip drive, finish with that press overhead. So we'll be doing push presses. After that, we're going to be going into snatches. So from here, Bull's going into that hip hinge, opening up the hip, finishing with a lockout overhead, trying to keep that thumb facing behind him. And then from there, we're going to be going into goblet squats. So holding that dumbbell or kettlebell in front of you, chest nice and high, nice tight stomach, all the way down and then all the way up. Good, relax, thanks. So we're going to be walking you through it as we, we go through, but we're going to be doing 10 per side, 20 total of the swings, eight per side six, uh, of the push press, six per side of the snatches, and then you're going to have four goblet squats. How many minutes? 11. So 11 minutes, trying to not put it down. This is the last time we're going to do this format um, in the boot camp challenge. Because next week we need to do our um, retest. Yes, we do. We got to retest next week. We got 20 seconds till we're going. It's going to be a big one today. So we're going to be starting with single arm swings. That's happening in 15. We got some nice sore traps today, so that's a good timing. I got to tell you, I'm hotter now, I feel like, than some of the other weeks. I don't know what's up. Oh, five seconds. Four. Three, two, one, 20 swings total, 10 each arm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's warmer in here than it is outside. That's probably why. Three, three. So for these swings, remember that opening the hip is what's getting it up. So the more you can keep your arm glued to that stomach so you can pop it off that stomach, the easier it's gonna be. After we get done with these swings, going to push press, we'll be doing eight per side. I kind of lost count, so I'm hoping Cole did 19, okay. 20, and I'm on the right shoulder, I'm going eight per side. So Tom is talking about your hips, swinging, the kettlebell. Um, great cue I heard a couple days ago from a coach. Um, the hips deliver the arms. Cool, this is a great cue for your push press. So think about your legs and your hips just delivering your arm up into that kettlebell, right? We're not strict pressing. Uh, tearing up our biceps here. We are dip, drive, and punch. Use those hips to deliver that fist overhead. Eight each side. Is that going to end up on whiteboard daily? Uh, I mean, most of I got it from NYU Strength and Conditioning. What's his name? Who's coach there? So I liked it. I don't know who. Oh, God, I forget his name. I can see his face in his beard. I wish I could, if I could draw it. I don't know. Six per arm snatches. Good Instagram though, it's got some great stuff on there. Are you a big Whiteboard Daily fan? If you don't follow Whiteboard Daily, I'm not plugging our Instagram here. Uh, and you have no idea what Todd is talking about. It's just, um, it's a guy who just draws really good coaching cues. He's a very good artist. I've tried to replicate some of his Whiteboard drawings, like literally on a Whiteboard, and I cannot. Or you know how to do it. I mean, he might trace them, I don't know. You gotta get a projector. Yeah, I mean, you sure. Get a projector on the board. That's how important it is, I guess. It's a great idea, but I don't have a projector. Maybe the gym does. Four squats. I know our gym does. Actually, one of our gyms does is just up on the ceiling. So. <laughs> so once you get through those four goblet squats, we're back at the beginning. Ten for arm swings, push press, snatch. Go on about whiteboard daily. Um, it's a cool Instagram. Some good coaching cues on there. Some funny little drawings. But no, I did not get it from whiteboard daily. It's amazing how many people get those tattoos, get that as a tattoo now. Yeah, I'm, um, that's a great topic of conversation because I'm trying to forget about my 11 minutes holding onto a dumbbell here. <laughs> um, 16, I'm on 17, 18, 19, 20, eight push presses again. We're all gonna be at different spots here for a little bit. So 10, eight, six, four, it's on the screen. Just stay at your own pace. If you need a breath, where should you take it? Overhead. Great, take it overhead. Take it overhead right there. Just snatching your push pressing. What was your competition? Oh yeah, fitness tattoos. Hmm. You know, fitness tattoos? Like that whole category is where we're at? Is, yeah. What's a fitness tattoo? Like tattoos of barbells, tattoos of, like, you know, everyone gets a barbell on the thigh. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm iffy about them. Why? What's the I issue? I just don't know if they're a little corny. <sighs> I think fitness tattoos are great. I want the Olympic Rings tattoo, but I think that if you go to the Olympics. And you know, that's what I thought too. Someone a couple years ago was in visiting and he had it. 
And I called him, I'm like, oh, have you been to the Olympics? That's awesome. And he's like, no, just hopeful. Oh, that, see, that's not allowed. I didn't know, I was like, oh, I didn't know that's how it worked. Was he, what was he hopeful for? Did you ask him what's work? Uh, he, I didn't see. Oh, wow. Yeah. Very technical sport. But I think if you want to get fitness related, if it's important to you, why not? Well, right. Just make sure the font isn't that if you put the writing on it. That's, like uh. my, that's my biggest pet peeve. All right. Start my third round here. Chris like, Cole's not far behind. Do I really need a rower tattooed to my body? Like a fun snake instead. This is coming from the guy that has zero tattoos. I don't have any tattoos. I would get, uh, and I do have actually planned a massive tattoo right there, but um, I can't afford $12,000 tattoo right now. So. Well, it's not going to happen all at once, so it costs $12,000. I know, but I don't want to get it until I pay for it. And I'm sorry, massive tattoo where? Great, now my roots are yes and no, it's going to hurt. Thank you. Whatever he says. I don't know it's going to be, it's my grandpa's paintings. Oh. My grandpa used to paint all these flowers upstate, and I like beautiful, I have them all over my house. When I give it to my favorite tattoo artist, who also is like an amazing, like, floral tattoo designer. I just tell her, like, paint something. Like, I don't need her to copy it. I just wanted to use it as some inspiration. That's going to cost you even more. You need a really good artist. Oh, then. oh I, know, I know exactly what I want to do it, which is why I'm waiting on it. You want grandpa, to donate? That grandpa actually, no, don't donate to my tattoo. <laughs> don't donate to like the Trevor Project, not my freaking tattoo. Um, that grandpa did pass away kind of recently. I remember. And I did try and hint to my mom, like, hey mom, wouldn't this be a cool tattoo idea? I wish somebody could pay for it, it didn't work. It was worth a try though. Oh, interesting. I thought you were just trying to get like her buy in on the tattoo. Oh, no. No, you're looking you're for the buy in. I'm looking for literally the, the buy in on the tattoo. <laughs> Oh yeah. Fifteen years old, but I got it when I was living in Maine. I was working on a sailboat. And I actually thought I got it on my chest so it would be private. Little did I know what my life would become. But so it's taught as plagued by having me shirtless everywhere you go. It's a horrible life. So if his eyes are too big, his belly's too skinny, uh, so people ask what it is about, and I usually try to say it's pride or something, and people are like, well, why did you get a tattoo? They get like defensive and aren't like pissed. Um, why did you get a tattoo then? That's right. I mean, you don't want to talk about it. I'm on round, what round are you on? This is my fourth. This is his fourth, this is my fourth too. We have just over four minutes left, so we're way past halfway. We're just waiting and talking. It's my favorite way to do these things. 11 minutes. Well, if you've made it through these seven minutes so far, give me your best. We'll breathe here. Breathe overhead, ideally. Give me at least another round. We'll hang on right through the end. Um, fairly similarly, for a long time in my life, every time someone would ask me what my favorite color is, I would just tell them it's a secret. And it would drive people absolutely bonkers. What do you mean it's a secret? Like, why, why can't you just tell me it's just your favorite color? I'm like, no, it's a secret. One of my favorite answers. Why do you say that, though? Um, j quite literally because it was funny. And it would just make people so upset. What is your favorite Next color? time you go on a first date, it's a secret. Next time you go on a first date, try it. I swear, it's such a funny answer. Yes, next time you go on a first date, it, first date, you want people to know you are not available, <laughs> you are not transparent, you have no interest in sharing things with them. I do, that's, that. that's bullshit. Set the tone right. No, my favorite color is purple. Oh, color of royalty. King Cole. Old King Cole. That was our Delta Top Delta. That was our purple and gold. That's definitely royal colors. It's hard to match things with purple. My mom's name is Diana. Not that Diana, but. All right. Less than three minutes to go. You're with me, we're heading into our fifth round here. What's your least favorite color? Brown. I don't own anything brown. I like to wear, that's what I think my favorite color is. So. Yeah, 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 you know, that's fair. How about you? 
I own one brown shirt that I like. I have one too. Um, probably yellow. I love yellow. Let's go. Dark yeah, skins. Yeah, I'm usually pretty color in winter, so yellow is a little color quick. All right. Hey, last two minutes. Don't let go. This is our longest don't put the dumbbell down day ever. ever. So you can hang sure. on for ever, ever, ever. Another minute 45. You're ready to dance away today. Just over 90 seconds. Not yet. All right. Wherever you are, we're just getting to that point, hitting the 10 minute mark. If you haven't put the weight down this far, you gotta keep going. Oh yeah, you're almost there. Just about 60 seconds to go. Whew. About a push press, here I am. We're going to have to ask all these athletes what their favorite things are, their favorite color. What else did we talk about? Uh, just how good my memory is. How your shirts fit you. <laughs> we don't know how to put that. Um, I don't know. All right, you got just over 30 seconds to go. Gonna get somewhere into the sixth round. Here 20 seconds. Switch arms, get that next movement going. Do not stop before I tell you the clock is beat. Finish it strong. 11 minutes flew by just like that. Last couple reps, punch it out good. Hang on. Burn five, four, three, two, one. And time. Ooh. All right. 11 minutes, just like that. Boom. Right on by to your longest. I know that's called our strength portion. I'm going to go out on a limb. Maybe say we all did some cardio in there too. Maybe just a little possible. bit. Maybe a little bit. I got in five rounds plus 20 swings. I got in five rounds plus. Or. Four rounds plus some snap. I wasn't counting at the end, I was counting for you guys. I don't know. So, those are our ballpark scores there. Take a quick second, pause the camera here, uh, pause the YouTube video, and just tell us how many complete rounds you've got, and then how many reps into that next round. So, as again, I got four complete rounds, and I got all, this, all the swings in for round five, which is 20 swings, so my score is four plus 20. All right. Take a second here, catch your breath, get a drink of water. Coach Cole's gonna be walking us through what the conditioning is coming up in about a minute or two. Still recording. All right, let's rock. Ooh. That's caffeine today. We have two four minute workouts. They're both AMRAPs. They have two movements in them. We're gonna rest between. Then we're gonna do the same two workouts for three minutes. Done this format before. This is one of my favorite formats. I think it goes by really quick. We're still gonna get a good like 13, 14 minutes of work in here. Five leg. Five leg. <laughs> five leg. You don't have three extra legs. Go look for them. Uh, five per leg reverse lunges. Cool. So, Todd is going to take a nice big step back with his right leg, checking that his front heel is on the floor so that his shin can be nice and vertical. He's going to push through that front heel, stand back up. He's going to make sure he does five on each leg, which is how many total? Ten. Ten. Nice job. Thank you. Then, he's going to hit five burpees over his dumbbell or kettlebell. So, he's going to stand on one side of that bell. He's going to hit the floor nice and flat. He's going to hop up, hop over. If he needs to do a stepping burpee, that's cool with me too. All right, I want you to pick the burpee that you can do for five so that you can get back up, go right back into lunges for another round. Cool, I would love to see, honestly, four rounds or more in that four minutes. No problem. 
For our second workout, who's ready for me on the floor? We're gonna start on the floor with 10 per side seated Russian twist. Cool, he's gonna have both of his fists together. This is important to me because I really want both hands to tap each side. That's gonna force you to reach over and activate those obliques that I'm looking for. He's gonna hit 10 per side, that's 20 total. So you can count one, one, two, two, 10, 10. Cool. Then he has 10 kettlebell squat cleans. All right. We'll do five on each arm. Uh, four squat clean. So for this, you're going to be holding it by the oh, side. Okay, he wants double hand squat clean. Oh, I oh. love this movement. All right, so both hands are on the kettlebell. His hips are down, his chest is tall from the floor. He's going to stand up nice and fast, make sure he's hitting good full extension, right? So can you do like a bicep curl and do a squat for me? Um, all right, so don't extend up, right? More. Sometimes on kettlebell squat cleans, we like to stay down in the squat and catch oh. the kettlebell, right? So Tom's gonna do a good job of extending all the way up, cool, standing nice and tall with the kettlebell before he hops into the squat. Just making sure we avoid that. No bicep curls today. Then he's back to the floor for 10 more Russian twists, 10 more squat things. All right, we're gonna go in about 40 seconds here, grab your last drink, <coughs> find yourself ready for some lunges. For these lunges, keep them body weight unless you just do lunges all the time. Body weight lunges, can, lunges in general can really sneak up at you. And the idea for this is to try to continuously keep moving, which is vastly different than the idea of our strength portion, yeah. which was also to continuously keep moving. Confusing day, I realize. Today's theme. <clears throat> All right, so four minutes of work, one minute to rest. Four minutes of work, one minute of rest. We are starting with lunges. Six, five, four, three, Two, we have five each leg, big step back. The reason it's super important for us to keep a vertical shin is when we have a vertical shin, our hamstrings and glutes are gonna be the primary muscles that are moving us. When we let that knee shift forward, and now my knee's over my toes, you can see my um, shin's no longer vertical, it's gonna switch the primary uh, muscle groups to be your quads. And since we aren't trying to hit the quads in this movement, we're trying to be hitting your hamstrings and glutes, trying to make sure you have that very vertical shin. In other words, to sum that up, if you want a bigger butt, yep. take a bigger step. Hey, yo. Cool. <clears throat> Most people want bigger butts. You know, that's like, that wasn't always a thing. Uh, bigger butts and bigger legs are really past 10 years, in mainstream at least. You agree? Um, like in mainstream, like thick culture. Yeah, I, 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 I see that. <clears throat> I mean, 10 years ago I was also 13 though, so I don't know if I was injecting my people's bodies yet. Oh man. Good news is you have the rest, you have the rest of your life to get there. Yeah, I know. You make up for it. Oh, I doesn't need to do anything up for it. Five four leg lunges. Five burpees over the bell. You're about 90 seconds in. For these burpees, you're trying to get your chest to the ground as fast as possible. You're trying to get down pretty fast, as opposed to doing a negative push-up, where you slowly lower yourself. That negative push-up, that slowly lowering yourself, is really going to fatigue you over time. So try to get down fast. Try to get down and up as fast as possible, so you can get more reps in. I have my sister's high school graduation party in a couple weekends. What kind of graduation? High school. Oh. Oh. She was born in 2004. Isn't that weird? Yeah, sure is. I know I'm being young, but I feel like that's 2004. Like, I remember 2004. Yeah. All right, we got 90 seconds to go. What are you getting at? That's a great question. I bought it. Oh no, by the time this goes up, it'll still burn it. No, not because, not because she'll see it. She's not gonna oh. see it. <laughs> Don't wanna spoil it to the world. That's because she's 18. That's all I'm gonna say. All right, you got just over a minute to go. About a minute 10. We got a minute of rest coming up. So try to see if you can keep moving until we get to that minute clock. It's only a minute, you got a minute of movement in there. So do I, so does Todd. Less than 50 seconds. 
remember, we've got an inner rest coming up. Big step back on these lunges, driving through the heel of that forward foot. Thirty seconds. All right, you got twenty more seconds. Let's finish it out. Get some burpees. Get some lunges. I'm gonna keep moving. Hang on for ten. Keep going. Your pace. Six, five, four. Three, two, one, and time. We gotta hold it up. Hang on. So speaking of whiteboard daily, yeah, this really isn't about them, but they had a post that made me think of it. What do you think about the mentality that like, no hands on hips, no collapsing on the ground after a workout? There's like a couple more things that aren't going to mind. He's like, um, I actually, it's funny you asked that. Um, um, I don't know why, this is not planned. <laughs> why is that? Cool? It just came up my life recently. I do, it's gonna have to be a conversation we have to continue after this. Um, the way I think program might do is Catalyst, right? And Greg Everett and Amy Everett are the owners of that. Super awesome people. If you want weightlifting, great content. Info and just want to learn how to weightlift online, go to Catalyst Athletics. I will plug them until the day that I die. Their YouTube videos are great. They're awesome. Free. Just fantastic. Greg recently wrote a book called Tough, and he talks a lot about that in the book, about what to do post workout. Or, Three, two, one. Ten per side, Russian twist. Palms together. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. I'm gonna prove you guys six, six, so I can count to ten. Seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten. And we have our ten kettlebell squat things. This is the same movement with the dumbbell. Just gonna place the dumbbell on the floor with one head on the ground, one head in the sky, and you're gonna switch your grip. All right, ten total. Cleans, and then back to the Russian twist. Back on the floor. When you do your squat cleans, just check together. You're getting that nice full extension, right? You want to learn weightlifting, like I said, go on the Catalyst Athletics website. You're going to need to learn how to stand all the way up before you hop down under a kettlebell, a dumbbell, or a heavy barbell. Um, we're moving. When you're doing these, try to keep your heels off the ground when you're doing these Russian twists. Try to keep your feet together, but don't hook your feet. Control it, don't just try to hook your feet and then use that as support through the twists. Just over a minute in. Remember, this is four minutes of work. Then we got another minute of rest coming up. That's gonna be our first round. We'll just have one more after that. As you're doing your squat cleans here, think about where the weight is on your foot, right? Your feet are attached to the ground. In my opinion, your feet are the only thing that keep you from falling over on a daily basis. Todd disagrees with that. I just want to cut his feet off and see if he can stand up. Um, but I want you to push through the middle of your foot. Well, you should feel the front of your foot on the floor. You should feel the back of your foot on the floor. But I really want that mid foot to be pressing when we pull in the kettlebell and pressing into the ground when you catch here in a squat for me. Mid foot weight's going to keep you nice and balanced, keep you over the center of anything you move. We're past two minutes, more than halfway. <coughs> All right. It is warm today, it's still summertime, I'll tell you that. All right, you got like just over 90 seconds to go. Let's try to keep moving. Minute of rest is coming up. That is not a small number. I have no one to blame but myself. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh. Oh, sweaty today.
45 seconds. We'll finish the movement that you're on, get into the next one. We got time today. Like Coach Cole said, we got less than a minute to go. You got your last minute of rest coming up before we go into our three minute rounds. So I think they're gonna start flying even more than before. 30 more seconds. If you're on those twists, try to make that set unbroken. Left, right, left, right, without having to take a break. 20 seconds. If you are doing the squat cleans, if you do need a break, yeah, try to plan it in advance. What I mean is, if you know you have to do reps, maybe think of doing five, quick break of five. Or even more, 10 seconds is helpful to think of doing like six, quick break and four, five. So you don't have the same four, amount of remaining. Three, two, one, and good. One minute up. Four, right. four minute rounds are done. All right, we're getting there. Doing a great job. Okay. So anyway, in his book called Tough, Grant talks about how that's like a, it's a little bit of a stoic mindset. Um, not the classic definition of stoic, that's just wrong. But in the fact that, you know, try and stand up after a workout, you don't have to hunch over, you don't have to lay on the floor. And it's, it's more of a, it's less of a, like absolute necessity and more of a chase of that, right? Like he obviously really talks about how he's not successful. Some days he lays down on the ground. That's okay. Um, but just like actively thinking about that you don't have to, and like chasing that as your goal, like composure. Um, that like the chase of composure is different than actual. But interestingly enough, the problem, the reason I'm between a rock and a hard place is that science tells us you get more air in here. Plenty of experiments have told us that. Five so, seconds. four seconds. Three, two, one, we have some reverse lunges. So, now I'm like, I don't know if I think about this. From a mindset standpoint, I like that. You know, like sometimes I, I think I'm a little bit dramatic and could have been proposed better. I wasn't really helping myself by like flopping over after a workout. But science tells you you recover faster your blood gets more oxygenated faster with all these experiments and they do where they make people like sprint and then stand up afterwards or hunch over afterwards. That's my input on that. Do you have an input? Yeah, I sure do. <laughs> I sure do. All right. Uh, my input would be lengthen that up. Like, like get skinnier? No, like chill out. This like idea that, honestly for me, a lot of people in classes, that's like a really fun moment. Yeah, when oh, you're done. Valid, absolutely. It's a really fun moment. You feel good. You got like a head rush, like everything, your mind kind of just clears away. You just kind of get to lay there and enjoy it. So why not enjoy it? Like, why does that have to be a sign of weakness? I don't think it's a sign of weakness. Never said that. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I feel like Ben Bergeron, like, that's definitely stuff that he also says. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't know, of all the things, granted maybe they're working with higher level athletes, and so that's where they are, but of all the things I want people to work on in a workout, not enjoying like 60 seconds of just like laying oh, on the ground. forget that, hard. yeah, I agree with that. No, for, for general members, it's just gym stuff. I will say, I don't think you should be working out so hard every single day you go into the gym that you have to lie down and die. I agree with that. That is different. Like some days you will get fitter if you figure out how to work at 70% for a longer period of time. Um, but again, Ben Bergeron works with world class athletes who are in competition with each other. If you're competing against somebody, you don't want to be seen hunched over. Like that is just full on mental competition floor. You need to look like you're going to beat someone if you want to beat them. So yeah, so it depends like who the audience is. I fall down after plenty of workouts, so I mean. And I will say, like, that's also just like a tomato tomato argument because you see really successful athletes work both ways. Some who just fall down sick here, and others who are like very serious about how they look. Twenty seconds. If you watched last week's video when it was like 106 in here, Tom and I were on the floor after for about five minutes. So I mean, we're not done. Four, three, two, one, good. Thirty seconds off. Not only were we on the floor for five minutes, three more minutes. Yes. But we had to walk away from each other. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm laying over here. Yeah. Cole's laying over there. 
It is interesting though, if you're an athlete who never hunches over and never falls on the floor afterwards, if you ever end up doing it, the whole world notices. It happened to Amy Forrestaller. For no sure. one had ever seen her even put her hands on her knees. She apparently had a heart murmur in her event. But when she did it, like the whole world was like, is she okay? Is she gonna die? Three, two, one. Right, left, right, three. 10 for a side, Russian twist. Last three minutes of work. Here we go. Up, find 10 cleans for me. Get it rocking. Three minutes of sweat and lay down afterwards. Cannot see. Huh. Ten's a big set. Rest in the middle if you need, that's okay. Put it down to five. Kick it out. All right, looking good. Almost there. You got just two more minutes of work coming up, and then we're gonna get you out of here. Maybe second to last set of Russian twists. Try not to put those heels down for me. No matter how sweaty you are. All right, 115 to go. Just over a minute. Ooh. Hang on, get this sweat burning. Oh, we came here for it. Your legs just get super sweaty, you can't even. You can't even put your hands on your knees, so it doesn't head. matter. So that's the goal. All right, we're okay. Less than a minute. You've gotten this far, you're still working. Let's finish this nice and strong. 45 seconds. Just over 30 seconds. Whatever you're on, there's a good chance this will be the last time you're on it. If you just started, so your goal should be trying to finish whatever movement you're on. Hang on. Give me 25 of work. No more, no less. Now it's 22. Just like that. If you finish these twists, get up, get some squat cleans in. They're there. Just for you. 15 seconds. Let's do it. Finish nice and strong. 10 seconds. Keep going. Five, keep going, four, three, two, and last rep there. Woo! All right. I'm, lots of working out today, lots of consistent movement. Like what? 20, about 30 minutes of consistent movement when it's all said and done. It's, it's pretty great. good. It's great. It's pretty good. Especially if you started this boot camp challenge with us on workout number one. Yes. I have a feeling you still remember how that first workout felt. It was a similar format, but at eight minutes. So now we've come a long way over, over this time. I just think um, one of the things I tell people the most often is it's really, really hard to do something consistently over and over again and not get better at it. Okay, like, I, don't, I don't like it, doesn't matter what it is. Like, it doesn't have to be fitness, it can be calligraphy, it can be drawing, it can be talking. So to say something. that again? It's basically impossible to do something over and over and over again and get worse at it. So I say some, something exactly the same but different. And it's just whatever you focus on, you're gonna get better. Yeah, exactly. Right, same thing Coach Will saying. So you're gonna focus on fitness, you're gonna do fitness, you're gonna get better at fitness. I gotta say, I'm pretty grateful that you're doing it with us. I'm sure Coach Will is as well. Yeah. If you're ever in New York City, we have classes, live classes on Saturdays in Manhattan, in Queens, and right here at Willie B Fitness in Brooklyn and Greenpoint with Coach Cole. Coach Cole's the head coach of that. So if you're in New York or you're visiting, you want to drop in, head to our website to find that information. That is down in the description, as well as all kinds of links. You can find our Instagram accounts, websites, and things like that. So if you got a second, you can go check that out. But first, if you haven't liked the video, please do so and then subscribe to the channel. We got one more video coming for this boot camp, boot camp challenge workout series. 
So until we see you in video number 12, I'm Coach Todd. I'm Coach Cole. And we'll see you then.